lies, hyperbole, dogma, bigotry, and every other conceivable form of propaganda that's little better than two dogs having sex in a park. No country can avoid conflict as the Muslim population increases. The history of the gay Nazis, the feminist establishment, stealth jihad was from left-wing intellectuals by pandering to the ideology of social justice warriors or SJWs. Thousands of years later, Karl Marx <laughs> is pure propaganda and demagoguery. Cultural Marxism is in the Frankfurt School, the politically correct orthodoxy. Modern Hollywood is becoming just as artistically repressive as the former Soviet Union. This schizophrenia can give you whiplash. If Joseph McCarthy, a man smeared by leftist liars. This was formulated after World War I by Marxist intellectuals like cultural Marxists and communists. The leftist talking heads like Noam Chomsky and Michael Moore Enter fat shaming, the intimidation and narcissism of LGBT ideologues. This phenomenon is known as Gynocentrism. Oh god, it's going to be another one of these, isn't it? Fucking hell. It's like the Welsh Davis or Rainey or something. It's ridiculous. Ah, come on, Kev, you can do this. You can do this! <laughs> Hello there, everybody, and welcome to episode 27. of the descent of man, O Sphere. The series where I take you through the ways in which the Manosphere and its utterly reprehensible douchebag inhabitants are trying to reverse human evolution and drag us all back into the fucking sea. And today we're dealing with a man who's kind of a white nationalist and kind of not white. Yes, it's rocking mystery. Now, before I even get going on the nonsense that is the mind of rocking mystery and is the content of rocking mystery, a quick note. Because rocking mystery likes to put false DMCA claims in against videos that are critical of him. Now, DMCA is a copyright claim, and although I will be, and indeed, as you've just seen, have been using his material, I think I have a very, very, very strong case under uh, fair usage, which basically means I can use his material in a very, very transformative way to, in order to critique his point of view that he's expressed, right? And indeed, he can do the same with me, and anyone can do the same with anyone. It's how YouTube works. But he likes to try and silence his critics by putting in false claims. So clearly, as with the rest of this series, I think I've got an absolutely cast-iron case on the grounds of fair use. But, just in case he does happen to get this through or whatever, I am going to put it out there to everybody who's watching this. Feel free to mirror, and indeed, if you want to, monetize um, that mirror on your own channel so that if he does somehow manage to get it taken down uh, this video will still remain out there and he won't be able to silence uh, a critic in the way that he has before. And what's most galling about him using the DMCA is that he's a libertarian and just like all right-wing libertarians he's a massive fucking hypocrite because he's against government regulation unless he wants to try and silence a critic in which case he'll use a piece of government regulation to try and silence a critic. So you know, fuck him. But anyway, on with the fucking show. Now Rocking Mr. E has a touch of the Stefan Molyneux about him, inasmuch as he is the son of Cypriot immigrants who is massively against immigration. So yeah, way to go in uh, pulling up the ladder behind you there, Mr. E. And one thing that becomes very apparent, and one thing that becomes very apparent very quickly when you watch his content, is uh, that he has a particular favourite phrase that he likes to use in basically every fucking sentence. How does cultural Marxism subvert the masses? These militant atheists are simply cultural Marxists. But feminism is merely one aspect of a wider cultural Marxist agenda. Deeply engulfed in cultural Marxism. Cultural Marxism. Cultural Marxism. Cultural Marxism is still alive and well in the Western world. Of decades of cultural Marxist indoctrination in society. I've decided that a fourth video is required to explain in the simplest terms possible what cultural Marxism is. Yes, cultural fucking Marxism. 
Now, you might be asking yourself, what is cultural Marxism, Kev? Well, I'm glad you asked. Cultural Marxism is basically a smear word that is used by these fucking dickheads in the same elastic and therefore basically fucking meaningless way as SJW and cuck and regressive and all their other fucking hateful buzzwords. And it's basically used as a shorthand way of describing the actions or beliefs of anybody who is vaguely to the left of Benito Mussolini. And, of course, the delightful twist being, they like to call everybody else fascists, because they know that that's um, a phrase that's seen as incredibly negative, and if you're seen as a fascist, that's clearly not a good thing. But their favourite phrase, cultural Marxism, was very much invented by the Nazis. And I'm not talking about, like, the modern sort of neo-Nazis, the kind of nazi light people. Not that there are any good Nazis, but you get what I'm going with that, right? Um, I'm talking about the actual Nazis, the Hitler Nazis. But don't let that stop you, are you lads? And not just that, but Rocky Mr. E's usage of it is especially stupid because he, he said on a couple of occasions, cultural Marxism has always existed, which means it can't actually have anything to do with Karl Marx then. So why are you adding the word Marxism in there unless you believe that Karl Marx is somehow an eternal being who has always existed? Which in a delightful twist means that if you do believe that, you kind of believe that Karl Marx is God. I'm just putting it out there. Do you know what I mean? You fucking idiots. But anyway, another thing that becomes very apparent very often, because he is an incredibly repetitive dickhead, that there is one particular decade of the 20th century which he blames almost solely for the rise in cultural Marxism in the West. Ever since the civil rights movement of the 60s, for the rise of the new left in the 1960s. His testament to the radicalism of the 1960s, the radicalism that started in Western Europe and North America after the 60s, during the 60s civil rights era, ever since the 1960s, but then the 60s arrived and the West yearned for a new society. Most of them are never going to acknowledge the damage that their 60s revolution did to society. Yeah, the 1960s was shit. We started allowing black people and women to speak. As much as that might have seemed like a hyperbolic thing to say on my part, it's basically true. It, they're going about it all the time. Because women are now allowed in the workplace and black people, you know, you can't just string them up from fucking trees anymore and all that sort of stuff means that basically the white man is being genocided or some fucking shit. But anyway, on the topic of allowing women to speak, now it's time for... Yes, it's the almost inevitable bit about Lacey Green. And it's just a short one for you today, because actually I don't think he's done a video about Lacey Green. But he did mention her, uh, on a couple of occasions actually, in a chat he did with a previous inductee into this particular Hall of Shame, one Bernard Chapin. I think um, there's been a lot of... There's no doubting that they've done a heck of a lot of damage to the manosphere. I mean, yeah. uh, but the, I think the main issue is that, you know, I've, identity politics is problematic. In the sense that there's that word that, you know, uh, Anita Sarkeesian and Lacey Green might say, but... Uh... So what if Lacey Green, or anyone else for that matter, uses that word? If that's the word you want to use, if that expresses the meaning that you wish to communicate verbally, just use that word. D do you think that makes you an SJW to use that word, really? And the thing is, right... That might seem like a small and pernickety thing on my part, but it actually speaks to the way in which, the, in their own minds, they've created this demon of Lacey Green. That to them, she's not the kind of nice, pleasant person that she appears to be to the rest of the fucking world. No, she's some devil creature that if she uses a the word, therefore it's tainted in some way. It's ridiculous. Not just that, but it speaks to the fact that their language usage has become almost the exact opposite of political correctness. And I don't mean it's just that it's politically incorrect. It's that they're basically doing the same thing as political correctness, but in reverse, in that they are now self-censoring, but only for words that are considerate and decent. Basically, they will only use words if they are entirely offensive and completely and utterly disgusting. It's literally the opposite of political correctness, and they're pricks for doing it that way. Now, another thing that becomes very apparent very quickly, because again, he's very, very fucking repetitive, with uh, Rocky Mystery e is just how little he understands about the world around him. Seriously, his videos are just littered with absolutely absurd nonsense. Just things that are just blatantly untrue. Just flat out fucking wrong. The existence of sexuality, otherwise known as sexual orientation, is a myth. 
wingers. So Farage would eventually, because he's pretty much isolated now. There aren't many right wingers left in UKIP, the way things are going. Despite popular opinion, Nazis were not homophobic. Modern Hollywood is becoming just as artistically repressive as the former Soviet Union. How leftists, the people on the far left particularly, they say they're a moderate. And he's ridiculous. That's Esme to a T. You can tell he's got quite far left views. He certainly has no respect for any sort of traditional values. They have contempt for it. As we can see, the neoconservatives either go along with the international socialist agenda or try to sabotage any attempt to offer a truly conservative or libertarian opposition. There's never been a country called Palestine. And um, she doesn't, I don't think she's a true believer in, the, uh, in, in Marxist ideology, uh, but I do believe Obama is. Yeah, that's right. Rucking Mr. E thinks that Barack Obama is a true believer in Marxist ideology. I mean, this is what happens when you watch Fox News unironically, you dickhead. Now, Rocking Mr. E has some of the most ridiculous, mental, and ultimately quite telling about his personality playlists on his channel. There's the globalist agenda, revealing how internationalists are gradually trying to move us towards a global dictatorship. I think that means the Jews, doesn't it? It usually does with these alt-right dickheads. There's deconstructing leftist ideology. I think that means the Jews again, doesn't it? It usually does. And then there's queer totalitarianism, which probably means the Jews again. Um, exposing the totalitarian queer agenda being imposed on individuals, the family and society. Which just goes to show you that you don't need to be religious to be a homophobic, bigoted piece of shit. And he also has some of the most amazingly mental video titles ever. Communist subversion of the Catholic Church which is just so mental to be untrue. Universities are Marxist churches. How many Marxists does he think exist in the modern world? Also, surely it's better to have a university as a church than, you know, a church. But whatever, I mean, it's all mad ramblings from a fucking crazed right-wing dickhead, so it really doesn't mean anything, but whatever. The EUSSR. He's very clever, isn't he? He's always oh, hilarious. And look at that thumbnail. Absolutely ridiculous. Nazis were not Christian. Just factually incorrect. Gay Nazis. I mean, look at that thumbnail. That's, that is... I don't even know how to describe that. That's crazy. What is love? What does UKIP stand for? I think it means United Kingdom Independence Party. <laughs> Joseph McCarthy was right. Which is just so mental as to be untrue. I mean, even most fucking crazy right-wing bastards have given up on trying to defend Joseph McCarthy, for fuck's sake. But no, no, Rocky Mystery is going to plough on ahead with that craziness. Brilliant. Is the West communist? No, obviously it fucking isn't, you mad bastard. And look at that thumbnail, that's incredible, isn't it? That's fucking insane. And a typical Rocking Mystery video will start with a crazy or just generally untrue sentence, followed by a heavy metal riff, because why the fuck not? Hollywood is a nest of leftist vipers. <laughs> Communism is already here. The far right of the political spectrum isn't fascist. Catastrophic man-made climate change is one big political scam. Jesus was not a socialist. Leftists have taken over UKIP. Planned Parenthood has always been a front for totalitarianism. Universities are to leftists as churches are to Christians. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and it is to one such example of an intro sentence from his crazy fucking videos that we turn to for... Yes, it's the inevitable bit about rape. <sighs> Feminists treat rape like a weapon. No, rapists treat rape like a weapon.
Now you could argue, although I think you'd still be wrong in the vast majority of cases, that feminists argue about rape in a way that is overly confrontational or aggressive. But that is a fucking world away from treating it like a weapon. And it is that kind of hyperbolic and frankly fucking disingenuous bullshit that means that it's difficult for any decent human being to take you seriously, or anyone like you seriously, on this topic. Because you have shown, quite clearly, that you are either incapable or unwilling to talk about this in a serious adult way. So, you know, shut the fuck up. Now, Rocking Mr. E is a true warrior for free speech. The left don't want free speech, they want control. The left have done what they always do, misrepresent, demonise and, ironically, try to ban dissenting opinions. This happens, isn't it? It's, it's, never, it's never implemented by any kind of free choice. Nothing, <clears throat> nothing a leftist is. You force, you make people adhere to what you want or nothing, basically. <clears throat> There are worrying signs that leftist internet censorship is becoming ever more common. Finally, all religious and political beliefs should be respected. You heard him. All religious and political views should be respected. And it is the left that refuses to do that. So clearly he, as a right winger and a respecter of free speech, would never call for the banning of a differing viewpoint. Right? Socialism should be banned. Oh, right. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? I mean, I suppose someone who tried to ban a differing political viewpoint because the people that hold that happen to disagree with him on certain topics would be... Corrupt and authoritarian. A totalitarian. Authoritarian. Authoritarian. An authoritarian. It's about as authoritarian as it gets. Yes. Yes, you fucking well are. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, why does he hate the socialists so much? Facts are replaced with divisive rhetoric to split society via race, sex, class, sexuality or any other identity so that politics becomes a mechanism of social warfare as opposed to common goals. Yeah, so I mean you might also be thinking, well therefore he couldn't possibly be one to use divisive rhetoric constantly against basically every group who isn't exactly like him. Well you'd be fucking wrong. Roll the clips. Try to suppress this with some sort of collective fantasy of one humanity and we take a great risk. Instead of accepting the creation of Israel, Arabs perpetuated the myth of a Palestinian state and people. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to cover one of the biggest delusions of our time. That you can be born with the body of the wrong sex. They encouraged minority Muslim uprisings that prevented any kind of peaceful transition to independence. In particular, we saw this in India with the rise of Pakistan and Israel with the fabricated Palestinian movement. Not an easy environment for a man at all. However, I do feel there are still a few good women left, even in this culture forcing EU members to accommodate floods of immigrants. Communists have also relied on the envy and greed of the working classes. This also explains why, when Muslims turn on their host nation, as they invariably do when their numbers reach 10 to 20 percent of the population, so many will murder former neighbours, colleagues and friends. Yeah, rocking Mr E, the ultimate purveyor of divisive rhetoric. And a hypocritical dickhead. Shut the fuck up. Now, if there's one group that Rocking Mystery e hates more than the Woms and the Socialists, it would be the Muslims. So when the people of London elected Sadiq Khan, a Muslim, to be the mayor of that fine city, what tiny shred of sanity remained in Rocking Mystery's head was stretched to breaking point. The colonisation of the European Caliphate continues. <laughs> <laughs> oh god almighty the european caliphate well look, i'm gonna go out on a limb here people because me and you viewer we have been on a journey during the course of this series have we not we have heard some crazy crazy shit and i think that might be 
the craziest thing we've heard. On the 5th of May 2016, London elected its first Muslim mayor, Sadiq Khan. As many people continue to pretend that Islam is an inclusive religion of peace, some of us see what this could mean for Britain, Europe and indeed the West. Yes, a guy who was born in London, served as a borough councillor in London for 12 years, and an MP for a London seat for a further 12 years, so I'd already served the people of London for 24 fucking years, right? Having him democratically elected by the people of London means that ISIS win somehow? Yeah, I don't think you've got your story straight here, but, you know, are you going to get on with this fucking talking about this European caliphate nonsense? Because, I mean, you've yet to prove to me that it's even a thing, so I presume you're going to do that now, are you? Sadiq Khan stood as, surprise, surprise, a Labour candidate, beating his main rival, Zach Goldsmith, of the Conservatives. At the moment, the left is a convenient tool for Muslims, although the relationship between Sadiq Khan and Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn already appears frosty. Whatever the reason, Muslims will not tolerate their unholy alliance with the left forever. So hang on a minute, is Sadiq Khan on the left or not then? I mean, at least try and keep your conspiracy theory bullshit consistent at the very least. In the meantime, Sadiq Khan and the left have turned up the heat on Zach Goldsmith for pointing out some inconvenient truths during the election campaign. No, 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 Mr. Reid, that's fucking bullshit, right? Those people reacted with absolutely justified anger, right? And it wasn't just people on the left, okay? It was lots and lots of Conservatives reacted that way. Indeed, including uh, Zach Goldsmith's own sister, for fuck's sake, right? All of those people reacted with absolutely justified anger at the blatantly racist campaign that Goldsmith was running. Choosing to focus on Khan's religious background and um, his uh, ethnic and uh, cultural background, the fact that his parents are from Pakistan and all that sort of thing, rather than focusing on, you know, trivial things like Sadiq Khan's ideas, his, his record in Parliament, you know, his plans in his manifesto, you know, the kind of trivial shit that you should be running elections on. The extensive record of Khan's past is now being swept under the carpet by the leftist and Islamist machine, the leftist and Islamist machine? What in the fuck is that? What the fuck are you talking about, you lunatic? Now are you going to get onto this fucking European caliphate shit or what? Which is what we've grown to expect when these ideologues are exposed. Zach Goldsmith is simply being attacked for pointing out facts that the electorate deserve to know. Well, those facts that you mentioned there were trumpeted really quite loudly by the Goldsmith campaign and were thus heard pretty fucking regularly by the people of London. And those facts can't really have been that fucking damning because the people of London heard them and went, eh, we don't really fucking care, and elected Khan by an overwhelming margin. A margin so large that Sadiq Khan has the biggest personal electoral mandate of any politician in the history of the country. In fact, he has the third largest personal electoral mandate of any person in Europe behind the presidents of France and Portugal. Yes, I'm a political geek. Leave me alone. So the question now remains, what will Sadiq Khan's time as mayor be like? This will almost certainly involve a significant rise in radical Islamist front groups. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa there. What the fuck is that based on? Oh, oh sorry, of course it's the evil pixies in your mind again. It's amazing what shit you can come up with when reality isn't a factor for you. But again, are you actually going to get on to explaining this fucking European caliphate nonsense or what? And already Khan's begun to target one Donald J. Trump's proposal for a US ban on all foreign Muslims. But again, it isn't just Khan or the left as a whole that are opposing Trump's plans, all right? There are lots of Republicans that have come out against this bullshit as well, saying that it's, you know, a divisive and ultimately unconstitutional plan. Yeah, but don't let that spoil your nice little narrative. This is Rocking Mystery, over and out. Wait a minute, hang on, that, that's it. That's the end of the fucking video. What happened to all that fucking European caliphate shit you babbled on about at the start? Like, you didn't even mention it again in the fucking video, let alone try and prove that it's an actual real thing, rather than just a figment of your fucking bigoted imagination. I mean, you really are a fucking lunatic. 
Another example of his insanity is the fact that he is a conspiracy theorist douche. Europe's migration crisis is manufactured by the European Union. In this video, I will expose just how anti-human the environmental movement is and how it hides its neo-Marxist agenda behind manufactured concern for the planet. Christian asylum seekers are not considered a priority by the left. Rather, it's Muslim immigration that leftists want to increase, since this will lead to a rise in Islamic fundamentalism. This will then cause another crisis that the left can use as a pretext to expand its power. Catastrophic man-made climate change is one big political scam. When Osama bin Laden, former leader of Al-Qaeda and former ally of the CIA, was shot and thrown in the ocean, questionable evidence to support the claims was provided. But bin Laden was suffering from kidney failure back in 2002. And yet, he allegedly survived for years, living in caves on the border of Pakistan and Afghanistan. I think it's, it's pretty darn obvious that, that socialists have a monopoly on the uh, academic institutions. I mean, we all know this. Most people know this anyway, but you're constantly accused of being a conspiracist. See? He's fucking crazy. Yeah, thanks for that, Rory Katz. You did really well there. It is quite alright. Now get me the chicken! Shut up, you dickhead. I'm just going to do the wrap-up to the video. I'll get some chicken in a bit, man. Fucking cat. Right, so to wrap things up, um, Rocking Mystery is a truly crazy, crazy bastard. Watching his videos, really, you get the sense that it's basically Davis or Rini in a fucking wig. He's absolutely fucking mental. And it's such a shame that he's a bigoted, fucking conspiracy theorist, right-wing, hate fueled asshole. Because he's actually quite a good musician. And you get the feeling that if he weren't so absolutely uh, built on rage and hatred of other people, he could create some beautiful music. It's just that his personality is so fucking hideously ugly. So, Rocky Mystery, go fuck yourself. Sure. I've tried to concentrate, mama wants to explore The tropical scent of you takes me up above And go and I look at you, oh I fall in love Whoa. No doubt you look so fine, Whoa. girl I wanna make you mine Whoa. I want to be with a woman just like you Love you like I can oh, Just let me be with The woman that I love Baby girl Say no to loving oh, 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 oh Mysterious girl I wanna get close to you oh, So close now So close now so oh, 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 oh Mysterious girl Move your body close to mine Alright, girl, you are me all desire. Are you alone and set me soul and fire me? Tell him, girl, you are me all desire. Are you alone? Watch this. Watching the sun go down, the tide is drifting in. We can get closer now and fill the walk within. Cause I'm looking in your eyes, feeling so alive. When you touch me, it's time to take it through the night Whoa, girl, I want to be with you Whoa, I want to spend the night with you Whoa, I need to be with the woman that I love Whoa, girl, I want to do to you Whoa, all the things you want me to Whoa, I need to be with the woman that I love
by the phone Hoping you would come front of my area Voice up feel ten feet tall the body where you hover Make the man them fall Man, trip up a man from time your name call Your pretty looks around me Like a flowers in a bloom Love the smell of your feelings I make you love perfume Your personality You know the light of the room I just want kiss alone I make my go home. Come on! Whoa, whoa, whoa Mysterious girl I wanna get close to you so close now, so close now. Whoa, 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 mysterious girl, move your body close to mine. 